we come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello and welcome to this week's online service. My name is Laura and I'm a new curate with the team here in Rosendale. Whenever and wherever you are joining us from, it's great to have you here to worship. And if you would like to find out more, receive our news sheet or connect with churches across Rosendale, you can do so via Facebook. You'll find us at Christchurch Holy Trinity or by searching for us on www.achurchnearyou.com. During our service, we're going to be thinking about how the decision to follow God's way has a big impact. The journey of faith is often one that can bring us into conflict with the world. During our time of intercession, we'll be asking Jesus to help us with those difficult situations, those battles we can get caught up in, and to help us when we struggle with our fear of being rejected by others, when we decide to walk with God. But to begin, let's praise our Saviour and invite him to draw really close to us by singing Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. from 
We come to say sorry now for the times we have ignored and turned away from God. Jesus saw the city and wept over it because it did not recognise the time of God's coming. We confess our part in the self-centeredness, blindness and sin of the life of our community. We have not always worshipped God, our creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. Trusting in God's forgiveness, we now celebrate his peace. God calls us to peace. In God's justice is our peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. In Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. If you're watching alone, you may wish to wave out of the window or send a text message to share a sign of God's peace. Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and how I wish it were already ablaze. I have a baptism with which to be baptised, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you but rather division. They are not two Bible quotes that get repeated often, are they? Not the ones you tend to find people stitching nicely into cushions or putting in Christmas cards. What are words like fire and division doing coming out from the mouth of Jesus the Lamb, the servant, the wonderful counsellor, the Prince of Peace? But it is exciting that in today's reading, we get to see a bit more of the full and vibrant portrait of Jesus that the whole Bible paints. We can come to know him better by wrestling with this whole fire and division issue. I think the reasons for Jesus's straight talking approach become clearer if we think of him as trying to open the eyes of his disciples. This section of Luke's Gospel shows Jesus working to get his disciples ready for what is to come. And here he's inviting his followers to think about how they see reality, challenging them to start asking themselves when they look at Jesus, when they look at each other and when they look at the world around them, what do they actually see? Do they understand 
how Jesus is significant and what his presence means for the whole of creation. If you're like my fiance and into gaming, you might have heard of something called an Oculus Rift console. I think I'm right in saying you put some high-tech goggles on and you are then moving through an augmented reality. It's as if you are physically present in wherever the game is set, a little bit like putting on very snazzy 3D glasses in the cinema. And it's supposed to provide this really immersive player experience. Now, this isn't a perfect illustration, but I do think in our reading, Jesus is trying to ask us whether we see the truth clearly or are we constantly being blinded by these augmented fake realities? And he's giving a warning about the conflict that will come when we choose to live in the light of his truth or if we ignore it and keep our goggles on. It's quite hard to picture. So here's an example that is perhaps more familiar and might hit closer to home. I used to work in marketing and the reality that advertising tries to create for us is really quite well constructed and thought out. So many products claim to be able to save us and solve all of our problems, don't they? Did you know that Lucky Strike cigarettes used to once insist in their ads that smoking was good for your throat and prevented coughs? Now that sounds quite dubious to me. I also came across a recent ad for a beauty cream that claims to be able to reshape your body, which I think sounds quite terrifying, but apparently it could give you your feel-good silhouette, presumably so you could be as happy as the elegant, beautiful, smiling people in the picture on the box. Now, those are just silly examples, but the subtle messages and underlying beliefs that are constantly echoed in our world can become difficult for us to spot and it's easy to become distracted and swept up in them. In our passage, Jesus seems to be trying to cut through all that noise. He's talking about division because he's saying to his disciples in no uncertain terms that there is one reality, one real state of things one truth that they need to stand up and take notice of. And that truth is Jesus, his arrival in the world and what he has come to do. He's asking his his disciples to remove their oculus goggles and tune out all the voices that are vying for their attention and recognise Jesus's life and later death and resurrection as the most significant event in human history. And he's waiting for a response that reflects the serious impact this event has for everyone on earth. Jesus makes a clear distinction, a division between those who do not see his crucial place at the centre of everything and those, the disciples, who are slowly starting to glimpse, however dimly, that something mind-bogglingly important is going on. So what does that mean for us? What does Jesus say is really going on with us and with our world? Well, he points out two very important things about reality. First, he's pretty clear that the world is not going to carry on as it is. The reality is that change is coming. Jesus tells us God has set his salvation plans in motion. He has decided to usher in a new heaven and a new earth. And you and me are all caught up in that movement. Jesus has come to heal the rift between God and his creation by dying for our sins. That's the baptism he says he must suffer. And in doing so, he has made a way for us to enter that new creation. And he will be back to make all things new. That's the reality of our position now. So although we might sometimes feel resigned or fed up or a bit too comfortable that things will just go on as they have been, we still need to be ready and to be pointing others towards this truth. A change is coming that cannot be ignored or avoided 
or escaped. It is an event that we all have to wrestle with for ourselves and decide if we want to accept Jesus's offer of new life. The world is being renewed and we will need to be reborn, born again, baptised with Jesus if we want to be part of that new life in God's everlasting kingdom. Second, Jesus tells us that the new heaven and the new earth will exist in line with God. It will no longer be out of sync with its creator. And this is great news. God has not looked at this fallen, broken world and thought, oh yeah, just carry on as you are, it's not that bad. You've been doing a pretty good job really so far, apart from all the violence and the slavery and the jealousy and the greed. No, God is adamant. This way of things cannot go on. Change is coming. And this is where the fire comes in. Peace is a powerful word, isn't it? But I think we can fall into the trap of this idea of an easy peace. As if peace just means shutting up, keeping order and making things appear to be peaceful. We can get so used to the way things are, we can start to believe that the world was made to know sin and the pain, the suffering, the groaning and the death that come with it. We shrug our shoulders and accept, well, that's just how the real world is, right? Again, God says no. Our fake, easy peace is not good enough for a holy God. A holy God cannot stand by and leave his creation chained and trapped by sin. It is good news that Jesus comes with fire because it shows he will not allow anything that is not of God, anything that would lead his creation towards death to continue to exist. He will root out and destroy the source of all our pain and suffering and brokenness so that all creation can be completely free. And this is where it gets interesting for us. The list of the two sides forming between the family members in Luke, father against son and mother against daughter, really hit home that when we align ourselves with Jesus, we are not just accepting and holding on to truth, to reality, but we're also rejecting lies. So division is to be an expected part of our journey of faith. Following Jesus means to take a stand against those lies that have no place in God's kingdom. It means to challenge the deception we saw in those ad campaigns earlier about human value and worth and where true satisfaction and happiness is to be found. As disciples, we're called to be opposition against the evils of discrimination, injustice and inequality. And this can't always be done quietly. It will bring us into conflict with a fallen world because the church is not a social club. It's a place where the reality of spiritual warfare is recognised. And as God's people, we should expect resistance and pushback when we resist powers that are not of God. Now, all that might seem very dramatic, but it is the truth of what is happening here right now in this worship service. We are inviting Jesus in to shine light and dispel darkness. And each of us is empowered by the Spirit to do the same throughout our week, wherever we are. And I do hope we call upon Jesus loud enough and often enough to cause a commotion. Trusting Jesus to come and transform the darkness that is lingering in our world is part of our journey of faith. So I'd like to finish with a quick look at Jesus's mention of interpreting that comes at the end of our passage. With all these competing claims, how are we ever meant to get a read on what's really going on in a situation? How are we to go about our day and be able to hone in on the truth in all that noise? How can we see the marks of the kingdom with spiritual eyes and hearts? 
Well, I think we can start by regularly reminding ourselves about some of the truths that are contained within God's word. God says we are beloved. Is this how we talk to ourselves? Or are we hanging on to, to old identities? God says all people are created in his image. Do we look for his face in the face of others? God says he will come to make all things new. Do we look for that growth when we see the same dirty streets and old buildings? God sends us out to make his love known in the world. Are we able to spot and to resist the things that have no place in God's kingdom? The gospel is not good news because it helps with positive thinking or because some words in the Bible sound nice and church is a good place to make friends, though it is. The gospel is very, very good news because it is true. It is the state of reality. It's true when things are good and when they are not. And it's true when we experience criticism, division, ridicule and setbacks as we follow Jesus. As God promised the prophet Isaiah, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth below. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment and its people will die like gnats. But my salvation will last forever and my righteousness will never fail. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy
let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We're going to dedicate some time to more specific prayers now. We'll start with the collect, a special prayer for today. I will then lead us in some intercessions. Once these prayers have been read, you'll see a small labyrinth appear on the screen. It will remain there for a few minutes. During this time, you may want to place your fingertip on the screen and follow one of the paths to the centre of the labyrinth. If you're not able to do this, you could always close your eyes and picture yourself walking a route that you know well. As you move slowly towards the centre, you may wish to bring a particular place, relationship, concern or conflict to God and ask him to reveal more of his truth to you. When you travel back away from the centre, allow God to gently guide your thoughts as you're slowly led out of the maze. After we've left the labyrinth, we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. The Collect, a special prayer for the day. Generous Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glory's sake, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of light and life, strengthen your church to witness boldly to your truth in every corner of the world. Help your people to break silence and be ready to challenge the lies and deception that move so many towards cruelty, pain and ultimately death. Lord, thank you that you give us hope to share with a suffering world. Please help us to look for you in each of the places and spaces we wander into. Show us, as your people, how we might express something of your love. And teach us to overcome our hesitancy, our embarrassment and our fear of rejection, so that we might be free to live our lives wholly for you. Lord, please guide us in how to show and share your good news with our children, our colleagues, our friends and neighbours, and the strangers you will place in our path in this coming week. God of justice, place in our hearts a concern for how others are treated. Show us how to approach tension and conflict well. We pray for the political campaigns and decisions made in this country to better reflect your compassion and righteousness. And we ask for wisdom for all world leaders, praying that they would recognise your authority and lean upon you for guidance. Lord, you fight our battles for us, and we know we can rely and trust in your victory over sin and death. So we pray that each of us would possess courage to speak and stand with those who are downtrodden, dismissed, facing terrible adversity and finding themselves ignored by unfair systems. We bring before you all those who are suffering upheaval, disruption and loss due to extreme weather, political, racial or religious persecution and war. Lord, when we are tempted to look away would you turn our attention back to those situations and groups for which you are concerned? Inspire us, Lord, to take notice, to build relationships and to be a listening ear. Generous God, we pray for our local community here in Rosendale. We bring before you those known to us who do not see themselves as beloved and who have been damaged by lies they have been told about not being good enough or smart enough, rich enough or pretty enough. 
We think particularly of those who are used to being unwelcome and unnoticed due to their age, history, addictions, habits or health. Lord, would your spirit move in their hearts so that they might see themselves as you see them, as precious children who are fully known and deeply loved by their creator. And would you help us to see others clearly, to recognise each and every person as special in your sight and to be treated with dignity, respect, acceptance and love. Eternal God, the pain and heartache we witness and experience in this life can be overwhelming. We lift up to you all who mourn at this time. Lord, although the journey of grief can reduce hope to a dim flicker, we pray that the power of your truth would light up the eyes of those who have suffered devastating loss. Would it engulf their vision? May they know themselves to be entirely surrounded and held by you in every moment and be sure and certain that your light has shone in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Almighty God, please continue to work your transformation in us. Help us to be careful about the voices we choose to hear and open our eyes and our hearts again to you so that we shall seek first your will, your dream, and that the desire of your heart might set the beat of our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to our prayer labyrinth. It will remain on the screen for a few moments. You may wish to pause the video to use the labyrinth for longer. During this time, you may want to place your fingertip on the screen and follow one of the paths to the centre of the labyrinth. As you move slowly towards the centre, you may wish to bring a particular place, relationship, concern or conflict to God and ask him to reveal more of his truth to you. When you travel back away from the centre, allow God to gently guide your thoughts as you're slowly led out of the maze. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of our worship today. Before we are sent out with our final blessing and closing prayer, we're going to ask God to keep our eyes open to his truth as we journey through the week ahead. You may want to do this by singing our final song or by simply listening and spending time tuning in to God's voice.
Father, we share together in the blessing of your presence. Give us in this life knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen.